Buongiorno a tutti. Good morning, everybody. On behalf of Italian Exhibition Group, I would like to welcome you all to Vicenza Oro Tea Gold, a very special edition which is marking the rebirth of events with people in flesh and bones. And I would like to thank the 800 exhibitors who have believed in this event especially in those moments when it was difficult to make a decision, they still trusted us and got ready for this. So I would like to leave the floor to DWS, a protagonist of the T-Gold event, which can be found in Hall 4 this year, with more than 100 companies expressing the best in terms of technological innovation in the jewelry industry. So enjoy the conference and enjoy Oro T Gold, which is Oro T Gold. Thank you. Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to this Saturday morning at Vicenza Oro. I have here with me Maurizio Costa Weber, Chief Technology Officer at W D sorry DWS, and I'm Luca Fabrello, journalist. So Maurizio, we have the responsibility of taking our audience into this first Saturday morning session of Vicenza Oro. Finally, we're meeting in flesh and bones again after the fact that last year we were only remotely connected. And it was impressive to see all those people this morning queuing up to visit the fair. Well, a lot of positive energy. I agree. And we're very, very glad to breathe in this recovery and this optimism. Well, this morning, we are going to talk about something which is strictly related to the concept of jewelry, luxury, precious items. Well, luxury notwithstanding the difficult times we've just gone through, is one of the few industries that has not really come to a halt. Luckily, those who had the wealth, those who wanted to invest, and also those who could not spend their money their usual way, you know, they couldn't go to the restaurants, for instance, well, these people maybe bought a few extra presents also for themselves. And we've actually seen that the trend of luxury is still strong. So the luxury industry did not come to a halt, but rather shows a positive trend. This is true, and we have a significant feedback from our customers in this direction. I mean, some industries top of the range fashion, for instance, have not suffered at all. And as you just said, Luca, most likely many people felt they needed to reward themselves after this difficult period. So they bought presents for themselves. They wanted to gratify themselves. Well, and on top of this, we know that during this period, many ideas were born because people were not rushed like they usually do. People had more time. So companies have also found the time to research because maybe they could not do so much for their customers, so they had more time. So there was the possibility of innovate. Is that true also for DWS? Of course. We have invested a lot of our time to think about something new, to think about something that could revitalize some industries which are very dear to us, including jewelry and fashion, but also accessories. And it was in this period that we have conceived some interesting products which we are now marketing. Last year, during Voice, we presented an innovative technology of DWS, the X-Cluster chain. 
uh, we will briefly hint at this today as well. But instead of talking of a technology which is connected to a software, which is the case of X cluster chain, which is connected to the NAUT software, if I'm not mistaken, I've studied. Uh, but today we're going to talk about materials, special materials, particular materials that have been dedicated to the luxury and fashion industry. Specifically, which materials are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about the IRIX range, which was born a few years ago, with the idea of exploiting nanotechnology to provide replacements for natural gemstones, ivory, coral, onyx, and turquoise. This was successful already a few years ago with an excellent feedback from the market. So during the pandemic, we decided to expand our range. We had the idea of developing innovative materials to produce finished items. In other words, uh, not materials that would activate processes, but ready to use items. And we have two ranges, IRIX A and IRIX B. A stands for Alumin, and this is an opaque material. And then we have IRIX V, that stands for vitro, vitrum, in other words, glass. So we're talking about something which is translucent. Exactly. Let's have a look at the first photographs that will guide us throughout this lovely chat of ours. We're now seeing some clusters. So these are meltable materials. They can be melted and they represent the X cluster technology we talked about last year. With the possibility of generating chains and links. And when the support is eliminated, you have in your hand the finished item. Yes, a unique item, which is absolutely perfect in terms of qualities, because since these chains are already connected, the links are already connected, and sometimes also the clasps are included, the product is perfect without seals, without joints. In other words, this significantly improves productivity on the manufacturing side, but it also enhances the quality. Moving into a completely new market area. Maurizio, the picture that we see in the top right, I mean, what is that? Well, that's an example of contamination between different materials. So you can see a translucent material this is IRIX V Ambra or Amber that has been submitted to specific treatments that make every link unique, together with metal links obtained with the X, X cluster technology. So that's not Amber. That's not Amber. It's a synthetic material. And just like we did six years ago, with the first IREX generation, we are trying to introduce the concept of sustainability. That is, we do not use any natural materials impoverishing the planet of corals and amber. We use top quality materials, but all our materials are synthetic, so they have no impact on the environment. I mean, after printing the, this resin, uh, do you need to process it? Yes, even though DWS printing technologies produce top quality items with excellent surface finish that do not require any significant operations afterwards. But there are also some special finishes, and this is the beauty of this technology. I mean, you can add processes to give a specific connotation uh, regarding the touch or ceramic varnishes, uh, scratch resistant treatments or other aesthetic treatments. Well, 
Let's move to the next picture so that we can see some more examples and so that we can better explain the next slide, please. No, they don't want to show us the next slide, sorry. <laughs> it's so beautiful to be live. There we go. There's a picture I wanted to show you. So here we can see some artificial gemstones on beautiful sandals and transparent chains that look like crystal. Yes, here you can see the real use of the Irex materials. Let me show you this. I mean, this is a cluster which in our technical jargon stands for cluster production, which is something new. Um, it is 3D printing plus productivity. And so these are top quality artificial gemstones that are 3D manufactured with all the cuts that the designer chooses to have. And as we saw in the previous slide, these artificial gemstones can be used in jewels and accessories made with investment casting. So new shapes, new colors, new cuts. Our company provides a very wide color range. And as you can see, companies using these technologies are totally independent because all this can be made by one single 3D printer. The very same 3D printer can produce gems, chains, and all what you need for investment casting procedures. Well, you have introduced a very interesting topic, colors, pigmentations. We can see some beautiful examples here. This is Irix V, the vitreous translucent material translucent material, and the colors are not just on the surface, is that right? Of course not. The material has this wonderful nuance. So if you wanted to cut it, you would find the very same color, the very same nuance and translucency inside as well, with these beautiful light reflexes that are very similar to precious gemstones, even though these are totally synthetic. Well, it is very important to stress this aspect because in the production of accessories and in the slides we saw before, we have also seen some beautiful handbag handles which are also here in front of us. I mean, we're also talking of functional parts that can that are exposed to wear. And the fact that the pigmentation is not only a surface treatment guarantees that also when you use these items, the finish will not suffer from that. Of course, this is not plastic. We're talking of highly evolved products from an aesthetic and a functional viewpoint. Products that can be used not only in a static way, but also in a functional, dynamic way, because they are resistant to weight bearing, mechanical stress, and so on and so forth. So they're perfect also uh, for handbags and other accessories, because they also provide some structure to the finished item. So thanks to 3D printing, we have been able to put together aesthetics with mechanical qualities, technical functional qualities that allow the items that we print uh, to be used. Absolutely. And this is not just a surrogate. Um, it is a new technology. It is a new proposal. It is something new with the purpose of opening up new scenarios for designers and manufacturers. This can generate a whole series of new collections and new items, which I believe is one of the most important values in the specific historical period. I would like to stress the following. When we talk about DWS, um, as I usually say, I mean, your company is based on three pillars. 
So compared to other competitors, you have features which are not the traditional ones, so to say. That is, your first pillar, just to understand each other, is the 3D printer. Your second pillar is the material, the resins that you produce, and you have a huge range of them. And then the third pillar, as we hinted to before, is the software. So the conjugation of these three aspects, which are developed entirely in your company, allows you to reach amazing results, surprising results. And we were seeing before uh, a metal and the fact that you can actually print a bracelet like this in a translucent resin allows you to develop items which with traditional technology could not be possible. Is that right, Maurizio? That's correct. Indeed, we trust into vertical integration, and we started doing so some 30 years ago. We started off uh, in Japan as a startup, and then subsequently, we shifted all the uh, factory in Italy, and the idea of having everything in Italy and not and not relying too much on uh, foreign suppliers for most important materials made it possible for us to develop unique products which draw big benefit from uh, this uh, total integration. The fact that the software, the material and uh, printing materials interact and are developed together allows us uh, to arrive at results that would be very difficult to achieve uh, without these features. Let's talk about Irix A. I was struck by the fact that, that you talked about ceramic material. This ceramic can be annealed, such as uh, ceramic, thus leaving, leading to true jewels made in porcelain. At my back, you can see in the first picture that bracelet in white. And well, that white bracelet is obtained by an Arix A printing. When you touch it, it really looks like ceramic, doesn't it? Well, the objective was that of uh, having the same features of a ceramic, that is, of the quality of ceramic uh, and of the mechanic strength of uh, uh, ceramic, because, you know, these objects are there to be worn, uh, and also the feeling of ceramic. Something different to describe, I uh, refer to that as some to some kind of silk effect when you touch it. These objects are pretty unique. Our colleagues said that these look like uh, cloth where you can, that can, you can paint, so you can use uh, enamels and other materials to obtain uh, unique craft objects. And this, perhaps, is the added value which uh, we provide uh, together with the total freedom in shapes that uh, uh, 3D printing enables us. So if we were to uh, talk about these uh, objects uh, that look like a ceramic, well, you start from a 3D printing obtained with Irix A resin. Then you print it uh, with a stereolithographic technique, the object that you want, uh, that actually is uh, generated before our eyes. That object is then uh, painted even with enamels and then annealed, just as we do with regular ceramic. At the end of the process, you have an object which is exactly the same as ceramic, 
And what about the resins during the annealing? Uh, are they altered or do they remain the same? Well, one of the main feature of the Irix A and Irix V series is that uh, they uh, enable the resins to remain totally unchanged in terms of their structure. So you end up having top quality products that can be turned into durable goods. There's no alteration, there are no distortions, so um, flat surfaces remain unchanged uh, and uh, rounded surfaces remain rounded. Your industry requires uh, top uh, um, perfection, so the combination of two objects, you can have indeed a mental, me metal casts with 3D objects uh, in that. Well, that enables you to have total accuracy uh, at the time the uh, object um, is released of the process. What is nicest about this process is that you can combine digital technologies with end crafts. So the 3D print basically produces uh, the cloth, but then there's the manual skill of the craftsman uh, that provides the enamel, the coloring, the paint, uh, and all those artistic touches making our objects a uh, top quality and very precious indeed. Now that we are talking about it, I think that there's something that we should not take for granted uh, when you uh, talk about uh, 3D print. Indeed, we're talking about um, lost walks or investment casting materials. So we're talking about uh, nanoceramic resins or some materials that have some features of ceramic. We're talking about classy material that are translucent. All these materials can be printed with the same technology. Indeed, this is a specific feature of the technology that we developed. Indeed, our technology is multi-purpose. So the printer remains unchanged. It is chosen depending on the size of the object that you want to produce. But we can use the same piece of equipment for some hundred of different materials. So there's total freedom that you can enjoy in terms of the material that you want to use with the same printer. And that, I believe, makes a uh, uh, technology pretty unique worldwide. I think that this has to do with the um, industry 4.0, which implies uh, producing what you need, when you need, in the more flexible and economic way. Obviously, with the focus on costs, indeed. And uh, uh, we are, in a way, able to cut on costs so as to become more competitive. And uh, with our technology, you can be on the market in uh, faster time because our objects are developed with a 3D printer. They don't require a lot of finishing touches, thus making it possible for that object to get to the market, to be on the shelves uh, in the shortest time. Now, we're looking at a slide uh, with uh, um, some mobile telephone uh, frames. And I believe uh, that there's a 3D printing unit that has been used. Now, the one at the bottom um, is exactly the same object that can be then uh, layered with leather. So you can actually customize your issue uh, uh, independently. Basically, every different items can be uh, customized. Indeed, uh, we have come up with uh, luxury items in the leather um, industry. We developed specific materials so as to make our object flexible, durable, and uh, accurate doing away with the possibility for them to uh, get deformed. So we have a, a lot of products that can be uh, lined with leather, thus further increasing the possibility to use our technology. These are mobile phones cover, but 
Our customers are also manufacturing very nice, uh, even large handbags and other objects that are selling very well in the top range of the market, in the luxury market. Do you think I'm wrong if I say that the type of technology that you are using and developing basically meets the requirements of the small craftsmen uh, as well as uh, the requirements of uh, manufacturers uh, in the mass market. So basically you can develop a custom product which is uh, printed and developed uh, based on the requirements of one single individual up to mass production. So you can have uh, even large numbers. Well, this is pretty much the DNA of our company. Indeed, more than 30 years ago, when we started with the first uh, 3D printer, well, then we got the idea of using the 3D printing technology and uh, uh, have it for personal use. And the idea was that uh, to have our democratic use of this technology. And we followed suit along that path, not just uh, coming up with um, high productivity items, but also producing equipment that can be used by individual professionals uh, enjoying all the potential of large companies. If not more, yes, indeed, because indeed we grant top flexibility and speed, something that individuals may enjoy if compared to large companies. Now, I'm thinking about the small craftsmen, and I think that the single professional may develop his or her creativity with that piece of equipment, printing different resins, different materials, generating different materials again, coming up with jewels that, and I'm referring both to jewels and to functional items, maybe for the fashion industry or other. And that individual craftsman may develop something that large scale would require perhaps impossible to achieve because you wouldn't have as large a request for that specific item. Well, we believe that our technology again uh, is very useful because it can be used by everybody. So not just by large investors, but individual craftsmen. And that, I believe, is what makes our technology um, so strong. Now, going back to aesthetics, thinking uh, about uh, RxV um, gemstones, considering that uh, these are not mined, of course, they are above ground uh, gemstones. Do you think this makes it lower in quality, less worth it. What do you think we can tell to people who may not understand um, about lab-made uh, gemstones? Well, I find it difficult uh, to uh, talk without any bias. Uh, well, of course, uh, uh, um, <laughs> We pay tribute to all the people here at Vicenza who work with uh, uh, mine diamonds and with um, gemstones. But I think that our role is that of research and technology, and our role is that to provide with alternative Well, just think that a uh, hundred years ago, a car would have a frame made of wood. And then things changed and iron was chosen. Now, aluminum uh, and uh, we have a lot of composite material as well. So basically, you know, uh, uh, as researchers, uh, we are there to provide new solutions. So I leave it to the market, to the professionals, uh, to decide whether our solutions uh, can uh, be um, taken into consideration. Uh, uh, or, um, or may just uh, find a place uh, in the market next to um, natural stones. Well, indeed, um, you're paving the way to new options. So you basically widen up the range of uh, products. You're not replacing something, right? Indeed. Just look, for example, about the handle of that handbag. 
that you see on that table? Well, I think it would be very difficult to manufacture that with uh, precious uh, gemstones. So you see that uh, technology may help us in introducing new de design concepts and new products. So these objects are printed and then polished, right? Yes, indeed. Um, the processes are fully automated uh, and uh, the um, production is quite straightforward. And then we shan't forget about uh, something else which is also very important, and that is the development of prototypes. With three, 3D printers, uh, you can actually um, streamline prototyping. You can uh, change the prototype a hundred, a thousand times, uh, and uh, of course, uh, um, prices that do not compare with standard production. 3D printing actually was conceived as uh, our technology to support the development of prototypes. You have to consider that confining ourselves to the development of prototypes would be um, really limiting the major step that we made. The great improvement in terms of efficiency is uh, transforming these uh, mm, the prototype development uh, into something else. And this is what we've done over the last 20 years. So, production systems producing what you need when you need it. I mean, without having to invest significant money in terms of purchased material, without the cost of big stocks, and the possibility of producing items right then when they are in demand on the market. Exactly. And then, of course, the possibility of a customized product, which is possible without technology. Well, if we look at these beautiful chain clusters, uh, each single link could actually be different from the other. It could be customized, uh, it could bear a logo, it could have a different detail. So this is extreme customization. Yes, this is a digital process and therefore it does not have all those constraints and limits of traditional technologies. And there's no waste, because when you print, you use a material to produce that given object. Therefore, uh, you're cutting down on waste. Absolutely. And the material you use is the material of the final object. Therefore, there are there is a possibility for this technology to produce not only items that are immediately accessible to the market, but also the items that are what the market wants. And, you know, we use up as little energy as a PC, as a personal computer. And this is another important point because we safeguard the environment as well. Well, back to another important concept in the jewelry industry, value. You print resins. Unfortunately, today we do not have that beautiful photograph I have in mind. However, uh, of course, there are copyrights and everything. So um, I've seen some printed items that are then branded by fashion designers, top level fashion designers. So, I mean, what I'm referring to is a beautiful item. It is about 20 centimeters tall, and it chose two bikers. And this is sold 
for a very high price by a well-known maison. And it can be possible only because of 3D printing. Is that right? Absolutely. The item you're referring to, uh, which due to privacy and copyright issues um, um, we cannot show, is an example of 3D printing at top level. It is a luxury item, and it is so complex that notwithstanding the high price, it is a bestseller. Our customers are really producing many of them. And it can be produced only with this technology. Its complexity makes it very difficult to produce. But with this technology, we provide the possibility of making things that were impossible in the past because they were too complex, too expensive, and could not be reproduced. I mean, producing one item 500 times, 1,000 times uh, with excellent reproducibility is a matter of quality. Well, if you allow me to use this phrase, uh, I believe that we can say that the value of the 3D printed item um, industry 4.0 uh, is not merely the value of the material, even though we know that resins are the product of significant research work, because uh, to be able to launch this quality on the market requires a lot of R&D, also at the international level, I believe, because I know that your company has many connections all over the world. But the real, the intrinsic value of that item that is sold on the market is not related to the material, but to the engineering, to the creativity, and to the uniqueness of that given item. Is that right? Absolutely. And it is our role to make all this possible, thanks to technology and through technology. Well, this was a very interesting conversation. We have sown many little seeds. And hopefully, this is food for thought for many of you. We have traveled into the world of 3D printing. We have traveled in the world of the software that allows us to develop innovative products with unthinkable geometries. And we have brought to your attention two types of material that can be used in DWS printers, RX A and RX V. I'm just summarizing by saying that one is more like ceramic, the other one is more like glass. Translucent materials that can be used in the fashion industry for customized products, allowing us to make something unique, which could not even be conceived until a short time ago. And this is excellent both for small manufacturing companies and for grand maisons. I believe that we have opened a wonderful window, and there is really the possibility to have fun with this. Thank you very much, Mauricio Costa Pepe. Thank you very much to the Vicenza Oro and IEG colleagues for supporting us. In the back office, I would like to thank Pietro Nardi, who has supported us and who is always fundamental in developing these events. I wish you all a wonderful day. Come to Vicenza Air. Come to the city of Palladio. Come to the wonderful Veneto region. Thank you very much for being with us and have a wonderful day.